Hello, Lieutenant. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Yeah. I just wanted to let you know before you put things down that there's actually water in those. Just don't dive over. Yes. And I've already spilled for all of you, so it's okay. Good afternoon and welcome. I am Lindsay Potter and I am so glad you are able to be here at Bright Light today. We have been open since the 1st of February and these past three months are a culmination of a vision that I've had for quite some time while working steadily on it for over a year. What a project it has been. Like most of the state, Battle Creek has a distinct need for childcare and it was so obvious that we needed more childcare options locally. These options had to handle the sheer number of children needing childcare, but also a variety of care models and or settings for children to become part of. Opening a small business in this highly regulated industry of childcare during the post-COVID world is not for the faint of heart. But the process revealed systems, scenarios, and situations that with the guidance of Lara's Child Care Bureau leaders have, have been identified and resolved. As we embark on a mission to open more quality childcare in Michigan, regardless of the model and mode of operation, the supports and coordinated efforts you're about to hear about today will significantly help the entrepreneurs entering the field, as well as, as, well as those of us already in business. Childcare entrepreneurs and educators will be emboldened to dream, create, and craft spaces set aside just for our community's youngest learners. As I have met all of these families knocking on the door of Bright Light, the deep root of connection shows up that people need each other to recover and reconnect after the last two years of the pandemic stressors. Innovative childcare fits the bill. I'm excited to be part of this announcement that will strengthen and grow our childcare industry. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Director of the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, Orlean Hawks, to the podium, who will tell us about the next steps the department is taking to grow and expand child care in Michigan. Thank you so much, Lindsay. First, let me just take a moment to say what an absolutely beautiful child care center this is. And thank you so much for graciously taking us on the tour. Quality child care programs like this, right here at Bright Lights, are the silent drivers of Michigan's economy. Without safe, quality, affordable child care, many parents, especially women, wouldn't be able to work to support their family, realize their dreams, maximize their potential, and to help drive our post-pandemic recovery. We and Laura are entrusted to make sure your children our children are in a safe and healthy environment while parents work. Whether your baby is 12 months old, like the little ones we saw here, or 12 years old, like mine back at home, all of us as parents want to know that our child care, our, care, our children are cared for by dedicated, trained, and professionals. Presently, Laura works with almost eight thousand child care professionals who provide care for over 386 children. 386,000 children. Let me make that clear. While that number seems a little significant, it is not enough. Nearly half of all Michigan families live in a community without enough child care. This has real implications for families who are forced to leave the workforce or must piece together childcare coverage that doesn't meet their needs or needs of their children. I acknowledge and recognize all parents and childcare professionals across Michigan who are doing the very best they can with whatever options they have. I see you and I know that we can do better by you. That's why I'm so pleased to be here today 
as part of this announcement of a $100 million investment that will dramatically increase access to childcare across our state. While our partners here today and in the legislature, we are excited to announce that we have already and are ready to tackle the big goal of opening 500 new child care sites each year for two years while supporting child care professionals who are already operating. This $100 million investment will expand access to quality, affordable, and uh, child care across the state through a deliberate and focused approach. First, we're supporting child care entrepreneurs by helping them find and create a safe place to open their business, such as Lindsay. Second, we're going to support their dream with startup funding that helps them get up and running. Third, we're going to invest in current and future child care educators through grants that support their learning and growth. Fourth, we're going to ensure that these new small business owners have the resources and knowledge they need <clears throat> to stay in business. And finally, we're going to make it easier to navigate the licensing process. We heard from our providers about how cumbersome, expensive, and time-consuming the process of child licensing operations can be. Let me say, licensing and regulation of an industry whose employees spend significant time with our children is critical for the health and safety of those children in care and also for the people providing that care. As we keep this in mind, however, we listened to the feedback we received, looked at our processes because there's always an opportunity to get better, to be better. When we looked at these processes, we found ways to make it easier for entrepreneurs who are starting a child care operation. The establishment of Lara's Child Care Licensing Bureau personifies our commitment to this important industry. Earlier in my remarks, I called child care a silent economic driver. Every driver needs a map to make it to their destination. And the Child Care Licensing Bureau is the one-stop shop that provides a roadmap to child care licensing. And that's what, and that's exactly what we're calling it, a one-stop shop. Child care is one-stop shop. It's where we'll connect the ground navigators and who are familiar with the process and familiar with best processes, and we'll connect those with the industry that are so interested in being entrepreneurs and to inform and assist them in starting their own childcare business. The One Stop Shop will provide resources such as easy to use toolkits that cover business operations and training, childcare education and continuing education, and licensing 101 a map that helps entrepreneurs navigate licensing more efficiently. When we're traveling, what's the best thing? We either, either have GPS on our phones or we have a map if you're old school. Either way, you need something to get you to where you want to go. So, still opening new child care sites is only part of the solution and we recognize that. The length and depth of the pandemic rocked the state's economy and child care was particularly hit hard. During the past two and a half years, the state has lost, and this number always sets me back every time I see it, 9,000 child care staff members. That's 9,000 people, I mind you, who have left the industry and created an insurmountable roadblock for parents trying to return to normal work that we're left, where we have to be able to rely on those professionals, but they're just not there. And as parents, many of us in the room, we know how challenging it is to try to find affordable childcare and reliable childcare. You're leaving your baby to people that you hope will care for them just as much as you will care for them. So for the past year, Lara has been working to address childcare vacancies by meeting people interested in providing care to children wherever they are in, the, in their career and in their family life. This investment will allow those who may not presently meet the educational requirements to gain in-field work experience by working at or starting their own child care business and simultaneously enrolling in tuition-free 
post-secondary programs such as Michigan Reconnect or the TEACH scholarship. And you ask, how will this drive the economy? Well, we know that most of our child care providers are women, and at Lara, we are in a unique and I would say a very blessed situation where we can support women entrepreneurs who support parents working in other industries. Today there are plenty of opportunities for child care entrepreneurs to grow their business and if you, I got to leave with an ask and also with you understanding that if you are ready, we are ready. So if you've ever wanted to become a child care educator or entrepreneur, there has been no better time than now, so I encourage you to join us. And with that, that ends my comments, but I would love to introduce my friend, State Superintendent Michael Rice. Thank you, Director Hawks. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, Director Hawks, Director Potter, and others to spend time with the children who will lead Michigan forward for years to come and to support child care facilities like Bright Light, Early Care, and Education. As we expand access to quality child care in the state, we expand our support of our youngest Michiganders. Expanded access to quality child care permits more parents to enter the job market and allows us to grow our economy, as Director Hawks noted, a stronger economy by extension then helps to provide a stronger education for our children. The first goal in Michigan's top 10 strategic education plan is to expand early childhood learning opportunities. Today's announcement is consistent with this important early education goal. I'm going to share quickly about the need for more child care providers in Michigan and what we have done thus far for Michigan families and child care providers. As Director Hawks noted, nearly half of Michigan families live in a community without enough child care options to meet their needs. This has real implications for families who are forced to leave the workforce or to piece together child care options that don't meet their needs. Even in our existing child care centers, over 1,500 providers across the state report waiting lists of families. Director Potter noted that her center opened on February 1st. I think it's powerful to note that more than 200 outreaches have taken place for slots at uh, Bright Light. And more importantly than that, that there is a waiting list of almost four dozen for entry into Bright Light. So reflect upon the need that uh, the moment uh, an early childhood or a child care center opens up there is not only uh, a filled to capacity, but also a wait list associated uh, therewith. Michigan has worked hard to ensure high quality early child care with a great start to quality system that rates and rewards child care centers for providing high quality, safe, caring, learning environments for our youngest Michiganders. In fall 2021, in her continued effort to expand access to quality, early child care, and in partnership with the state legislature, Governor Whitmer signed an historic $1.4 billion investment to make child care low or no cost for 105,000 more children, to provide $700 million in relief funding to child care businesses, and deliver bonuses to 38,000 child care professionals. Governor Whitmer has supported quality child care and its expansion for many years. Her first two budgets included an expansion in child care to increase the family income eligibility threshold from 130 percent of the federal poverty level to 150 percent, which the legislature rejected. During the pandemic, however, and with the legislature's support, Governor Whitmer has been able to expand that threshold to 185% of the federal poverty limit with $1.4 billion in federal funds and to better address families' child care needs. Seven rounds of child care investment with federal and state dollars have brought needed resources to existing child care programs during the pandemic, have helped families and child care providers, and have permitted child care providers to stay open to serve children 
and families during the pandemic. In addition to our thanks to the governor and lieutenant governor for their support of child care expansion, we appreciate our child care team at the Michigan Department of Education, led by Director Lisa Brewer Walraven, who is here with us today, it is about as far away from me as she could possibly be. Lisa, can you do the Queen's way, please? Thank you very much. Since the pandemic hit 26 months ago, this team has really leaned into supporting, protecting, and now expanding child care in the state to deliver this record amount of child care funding to families and providers. We also appreciate greatly the partnership with Laura, partnership with the Executive Office of the Governor. It really does take a village to support young people in the state of Michigan. We have the resources and the opportunity right now to get it done for children in Michigan. It's um, more than ironic that it takes a pandemic to provide for our young people, but in some ways it has taken a pandemic to uh, really wake people up about the critical need of child care, um, not simply for parents who struggle with it every day, but for those who don't struggle with it every day and who needed a little bit of a wake-up call about the importance thereof. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Mr. Javon Dobbs is a Battle Creek resident, husband, and father of two who attend Bright Lights. He works in communications and is committed to using narrative to promote justice and equity for all. He's a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, the first member of the Divine Nine, a member of Radiant Church, a proud big brother with Big Brothers Big Sisters of Southwest Michigan, and a mentor with Inner City Youth for Change. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Javon Dobbs. Hi, <clears throat> Hi I'm, I'm Javon. Uh, I'm representing today my, my wife, Tanya, and um, our two boys, Kai and Emery. Kai's two and Emery's one, they both attend Bright Lights. Um, as we were emerging from two years to full time during the pandemic, my wife was returning to the workforce and we were looking for affordable and safe care for our children to learn and grow. We quickly realized how challenging it was and how there wasn't a lot of spots or places available. We searched for months and finally bright lights popped up on our radar. We toured the place, it was still under construction, um, but we fell in love and we fell in love with, with Lindsay's vision for increasing access to high quality care in our city. I can't speak more highly of this place, what it's meant for me, my boys and our family. It truly has been a extension of home um, and we love the staff here they pour uh, love compassion and purpose into our kids every day i really believe we need to give more honor to our caregivers thank you for all that you do for us and our children i recognize that i'm privileged to have a place like bright lights to send my kids where they are loved and taken care of everyone in our state should have access to quality care, regardless of their race, gender, or economic status. They should have a place like Bright Lights in their community. Our children are our most precious asset. An investment in them is an investment in the future of our great state. Thank you for allowing me to share our story. Now I'd like to introduce Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist. All right. Well, Javon, thank you so much. You know, as a father, it's, it's just really always inspiring to hear from uh, fathers talking about how we as community must come together to make sure that our children have everything we need. And so just thank you so much for participating in this. It's such a privilege to be here. And I want to speak a little bit about um, what we're talking about with the Caring for My Future program, but I do want to address something first that is also very important to children and families in Michigan and throughout the country, and it's the fact that we actually need to be able to feed our children. And right now, some of you may have heard or seen or even experienced uh, the fact that we have had challenges with the availability of baby formula across the country, and as a father, 
you know, I, I recognize what that means and the gravity of it. Like my baby girl, Ruby, she'll be three in June. But this is a really hard time for parents, for caregivers, for families, for children overall. And this issue has added to it. And folks having trouble is something that we never want anyone to experience. And so this structural problem is something that we have to make sure we're responding to at every level and at every opportunity. And so that's why just in the last week, um, Governor Whitmer has had a conversation with Abbott Leadership, the company that has been one of the sources of the main challenges here, as well as our Michigan Department of Health and Human Services about the about the, um, the Women, Infant, and Children's Program, or WIC, as well as Attorney General Dana Nessel, who I was talking with as well, to ensure that the state of Michigan is using every tool at our disposal to make sure that we can deal with this shortage. For example, our WIC program here in the state of Michigan has been temporarily expanded to create access to more alternative formula options that will be available and qualify for WIC assistance. This will ensure that families who are taking uh, advantage of this benefit will be able to use the formula that is readily available. We also are, have directed our WIC staff to make sure that they're ready to guide all of the clients that they serve to stores where formula has been recently purchased and is available. Attorney General Nestle's consumer protection team is also identifying and actively investigating instances of price gouging related to the shortage, because I can think of nothing worse than taking advantage of families who are trying to use every resource and opportunity to feed their children. We're going to work closely with the federal government as well as our private sector partners to make sure we can address supply issues as quickly as possible and get formula where it needs to go. Now here in Michigan, as I said, we support children and families and women. This is part of our broader commitment to supporting reproductive freedom. Now let's be clear, we want to talk about reproductive freedom and what that can enable. That means more than just birth control. It means more than abortion access. It means supporting families in their, in their decisions to become parents and supporting them while they are actually parents. Making sure that we can make childcare more affordable, formula as available as possible, and so much more as part of our commitment to do what we really came here to do, which is support people who are choosing to live in Michigan and who make the decision to grow their family. I want you to know that Gretchen Whitmer and I have your back. We're going to continue to grow Michigan's economy and build prosperity. This is part of it. And so again, as Lindsay, I want to thank you so much for uh, having us here today at Bright Lights. It's, it's a really apt title um, for, the, for the place. The, that is every space that we went to uh, is, is beautiful natural light. And as someone who lives in a 100-year-old uh, building, like I respect the, the renovation process that went into this, it's a really inspiring space. Um, so Lindsay, I just appreciate your vision. And I want to thank um, my counterparts in state government uh, who are here to talk about what, why this matters as well. Director Hawks and Superintendent Dr. Rice, uh, yours and your teams as leaderships to get us to the, the place we are today, to be able to support people with dreams and ideas like this, and to position our youngest Michiganders so that they can dream and envision themselves in a community that is responsive to their needs is really incredible. So I'm just so excited to be here again, not just as Lieutenant Governor, but as a parent Again, I have twin eight-year-olds in addition to that almost three-year-old who will be three on Juneteenth. And so to see here and to see um, places that are positioning young people for success, it really is extraordinary. Child care keeps the state of Michigan functioning. Let me be really clear about that. One, one thing we saw in the pandemic amongst everything else is that when there's no place for children to go, like everything stops. Everything falls apart. Like society doesn't work if we don't have places for our children to be. And so far too many families in Michigan, as we have moved forward and as we move through what we're all facing collectively, they live in communities where demand far outstrips supply. Your wait list, as Lindsay, is, I understand it, is literally double your capacity. And this is a brand new center, which means that there have been that many people waiting for a long time. So I'm proud that we are it, with this announcement, setting a really bold goal of expansion to open 1,000 new child care centers in two years. This will help us be able to, again, position more families to be their full selves, to, to recognize their full economic productivity and potential. Because believe me, again, nothing unlocks parental productivity like a safe, affordable, reliable, 
convenient place for our children to be that we can trust. Now we've worked hard to keep our existing child care programs open. And now we need to support more entrepreneurs like Lindsay who are opening new child care businesses. I will admit that this 1,000 new site goal is aggressive. Like it's forward leaning. It's a big number. But that's why I'm so proud that again, with is a whole of government approach that's represented here today to make sure that we can get there. This $100 million investment to give entrepreneurs access to the capital, the spaces, the support, and the staff they need to succeed in this industry is something that we hope will be a model for the rest of the country. Through caring for my future, we are investing in, in not only dedicated child care entrepreneurs, but also the child care professionals who serve our kids every day and expanding access to high quality, affordable care. This is just the latest piece of a $1.4 billion investment that the governor signed into law last fall. It's the largest investment in a single year in child care expansion in the history of the state of Michigan because we know that we need more professionals to support more families and support more children to position more communities to be successful. Now, I did have a chance to actually tour the facility, and again, it's incredible in its innovation because it's a different kind of place that, that creates a different kind of energy for the families that enter, for the young people who learn and grow here, and for the professionals who serve their community here. Now, as a former entrepreneur, or should I say a two-time recovering entrepreneur, I recognize that there are a lot of challenges to starting a business. There's a lot of challenges when it comes to navigating, especially a regulated industry like childcare. But again, we want to make sure that the pathways to entering this high demand, high need set of business opportunities, that they're actually paved for you, that they make sense. Because again, this is about supporting our families and this, it's a business need that meets it. I mean, if you think about it, like creating a childcare business is kind of the perfect business, Dr. Rice. It creates value immediately, like immediately. As soon as this opened, it was full, right? So immediately it meets a, it meets a need. It creates job opportunities for amazing and energetic professionals who we need to make sure that we are taking not just good care of, but great care of. I mean, if we want to make sure that we're positioning young people for success and taking care of our children, we need to take care of the adults that take care of children. And that's what part of this is about what this program represents. It's building upon investments that we've already made through the Child Care Stabilization Grant Program, which have been two rounds of $350 million worth of funding to support child care businesses that applied. And this is a grant program that was non-competitive. If you applied for money, you got resources to expand your staff to renovate your facilities, to add a software program if you wanted to install a camera so parents could look when they couldn't visit in person. And most importantly, to give bonuses to child care professionals who do the hardest job in education and are in most parts of our country the least well compensated. To give $1,000 bonuses to every child care professional, not once but twice, was part of what we wanted to do to make sure that, that folks knew that that profession is and will continue to be respected here in the state of Michigan, and we hope to put it on a path to better compensation going forward. So, you know, while I, I'm going to open up for questions in a second, but I just want to, you know, make sure that folks know that again, we're here to support every family in Michigan. Families live in different contexts, communities have different circumstances, children have different needs, but we are here to make sure that every element of state of the state of Michigan's government is working together to make sure that families are positioned to succeed in Michigan, that people are positioned to be healthy, that we are investing in the communities that lead to healthy lifestyles, that whenever a person makes the choice to live in Michigan or to grow their family in Michigan, that the state of Michigan with a capital S and capital M will be there to meet them where they are so that that future can be a little bit more prosperous, a little bit more inclusive, and a lot more successful. So, so thank you so much, all of you, for, for, for joining us here today and for gathering here today to celebrate this announcement, because this is a celebration of a bright future in Michigan. And I can think of no better place to do it than here in Battle Creek at Bright Lights. So thank you so much, everyone. And with that, uh, we can open up to any questions. So you want to you speak to that directly? 
that right now. Thank you for that question. Like the LG said, the need is great. The need is great. And we are prepared. Uh, we will have a team. Actually, we have our uh, director here today, Emily Laidlaw, who is our director of Child Care License and Bureau. And she will assemble a team that will meet with providers to look at, to ask them to get the feedback on what they actually need in order to be successful. And the grant process that will unfold will entail her bureau looking at every single application and looking at what the needs are and distributing the application and the money as it uh, as it allows. So the way that it works is there will be an uh, online process and there will also be uh, an application process that you can send in. So there's going to be many different avenues that you can actually send the application to Lara and we will take a look at each application on a case by case basis. It will begin. Sure. So we expect that this will be uh, available. My understanding is in June. We will get the ball rolling with the application process. And so more information will be forthcoming on that. So the timeline of this investment, as we uh, just talked about, is that we will have this as two years. So we will have, make sure that within two years, we will be distributing the money. We'll have over a thousand, about a thousand or so new um, child care centers that will be up and running. That will account for about 50 in terms of capacity that we currently do not have. And the way that we are looking at that is we're taking into account what we, uh, the data that we have in terms of child care centers and home centers, and we're using that to inform how many uh, new child care centers we will have. So, you know, there's always an opportunity to improve. And uh, as I was walking with Lindsay, um, she told us about some of the challenges. And that's what this uh, day is about. That's what this investment is about, is to reduce those barriers. And so, you know, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done, but that's why we have the teams that are available right now to help with that process. Because we understand that there were a lot of barriers to child care licensing, not only in terms of time, but also uh, in terms of dollar amount. And these grants are going to be used to mitigate a lot of those um, startup costs, a lot of the renovation costs, a lot of the uh, licensing fees and costs. So we need more of Lindsay's, and, and obviously the, the need is there, uh, the demand is there. And we have, we've been going all across the state. We have child care access fairs, Grand Rapids, Petoskey, Detroit area, and we're really trying to get the message out that we are here to help and that there are opportunities and that there um, is significant amount of resources. And so the Child Care Licensing Bureau has been working with their providers. The providers are getting information out to their groups. We've been working with stakeholders. Stakeholders are a huge asset for us in getting information out and on our webpage. And so um, we hope that events like this as well will bring awareness that there is help there and that there's this investment that's allowable uh, to help uh, child care providers who want to be entrepreneurs or people who want to be entrepreneurs that currently are not. So, so um, I mentioned the Child Care Stabilization Grant Program uh, earlier. We've done two rounds of that for $700 million total. And part of the intention of those funds was to support uh, child care businesses around the state of Michigan and different communities uh, to be able to stay open because we did see a lot close their doors. But building on that is what the, you know, Caring for My Future is exactly designed to do for places where we may have had gaps we didn't have them before or 
where we knew that we always had gaps and need to fill them, the intention of, again, being so aggressive with launching more um, child care facilities is so that we can meet these needs that are either new or have been newly identified. And we believe that we can scale this up to the question on training or, or, or regulatory frameworks. We can scale this up without compromising quality, without compromising safety, without compromising rigor, but instead encouraging creativity, encouraging kind of innovation to unlock new spaces that perhaps may not have been understood to be even capable of housing child care facilities, as well as new models for care and for delivery. So we think that this will, um, I think that kind of innovation also, we, we hope will inspire more people to become child care professionals and to see themselves or see a pathway to a career in this field too. Um, again, we think all these elements are things that Michigan can lead on. This is coming from monies that were signed in our, our, our state budgets just last year. Okay. Any more questions? All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>